Welcome to the 2023 CDL Combination Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the question. Question 1. A vehicle's air brake system should build air pressure back up from 85 to 100 psi within A. 60 seconds B. 2 minutes C. 45 seconds D. 30 seconds. The correct answer is C. 45 seconds. After air tanks have been applied during an air brake check, a driver needs to time how long it takes for pressure to build back up. For safety purposes, the driver needs to make sure the tanks fill up from 85 to 100 psi in 45 seconds. Question 2. What is the National Response Center? A. Hotline to report unsafe hazmat drivers. B. An organization that gives information on how to load hazardous materials. C. An organization that coordinates emergency response to chemical hazards. D. Hotline for information about hazardous materials. The correct answer is... C. An organization that coordinates emergency response to chemical hazards. The National Response Center is staffed 24 hours a day by the Coast Guard. It is a designated point of contact to report all oil, chemical, radiological, biological, and etiological discharge into the environment. Question 3. What kind of tanks have bulkheads with holes for liquid to fold through? A. Smooth bores. B. Bulkheads. C. Baffled liquid tanks. D. Liquid tanker. The correct answer is... C. Baffled liquid tanks. Baffled liquid tanks allow liquid to flow through using bulkheads with holes. The bulkheads control the back and forth and side-to-side -side liquid surge. Question 4. What kind of tank is not permanently attached to a vehicle? A. Portable tank. B. Cargo tank. C. Bulkhead tank. D. Detachable tank. The correct answer is... A. Portable tank. Portable tanks are loaded and unloaded while disconnected from a vehicle. After the loading and unloading process is completed, then the tank is attached to the transporting vehicle. Question 5. What is the hazard of transporting liquid in a tank? A. The vehicle being pushed forward when stopping due to liquid surge. B. Leaks and spills. C. Fire explosions. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. There are many dangers involved with driving tanker trucks. Many times, tanker trucks transport liquid cargo such as ethanol, gasoline, diesel, and more. These liquids are highly flammable and could be explosive in the event of an accident. Drivers must also be aware of their vehicle being pushed forward when stopping since the liquid will surge. Leaks and spills are also another risk factor. Question 6. What braking technique should be used when going down a steep downgrade? A. Same braking as normal. B. Snub braking. C. Stab braking. D. Engine braking. The correct answer is... D. Engine braking. Engine braking is the process of taking the foot off of the accelerator while downshifting gears. There are many benefits to engine braking, such as safety while downhill driving, improved fuel efficiency, and lower maintenance cost. Question 7. How far away should placards be placed away from other markings on the vehicle? A. 5 inches. B. 3 inches. C. 1 foot. D. 15 inches. The correct answer is... B. 3 inches. Drivers must make sure that placards are positioned on their vehicle 3 inches away from other markings. Some types of markings would include advertisements, company name, and more. Placards display important information and distractions away from these warnings need to be eliminated. Question 8. What precautions should a driver take when driving on black ice? A. Get off the road immediately. B. Drive slow. C. Keep a safe distance. D. Use safe braking techniques. The correct answer is... A. Get off the road immediately. It is unsafe for any vehicle to drive on black ice. Driving a tanker is especially hazardous and should never be attempted. Question 9. 
Anyone attending to a parked placarded vehicle must remain within blank of the vehicle. A. 75 feet. B. 25 feet. C. 100 feet. D. 50 feet. The correct answer is C. 100 feet. A person who is attending to a parked vehicle must be within 100 feet with a clear view. The person attending must also know what procedures are in place in the event of an emergency and be able to move the vehicles if needed. Question 10. When facing a hazard ahead, many times it is safer to A. Try to warn other vehicles to clear the way. B. Steer away. C. Use stab braking. D. Shift lower gear. The correct answer is B. Steer away. If a driver sees a hazard ahead, steering away may be safer than risking a tanker tipping over or coming in contact with the hazard. Drivers must be skilled and ready to make these decisions in a short amount of time. Question 11. Driving alone increases the chances of a driver A. Becoming distracted B. Making careless mistakes C. Acting aggressive D. Becoming fatigued The correct answer is D. Becoming fatigued Driving with a passenger can reduce the chances of a driver becoming fatigued. The highest percentage of fatigue accidents are those who are driving alone. Having someone to talk to helps to keep a driver alert and engaged. Question 12. Drivers should always remove the keys and apply the parking brake when A. Leaving the vehicle with an attendant B. Leaving the vehicle unattended C. Reviewing paperwork D. None of the above The correct answer is B. Leaving the vehicle unattended There are precautions drivers must take when leaving their vehicle unattended to avoid theft or other hazards. In addition to removing keys and applying the parking brake, Drivers should chalk their wheels to prevent rolling. Question 13. In the event of a leak involving blank, the vehicle should not be used until it is cleaned. A. Water. B. Dry good. C. Radioactive material. D. Cattle feed. The correct answer is C. Radioactive material. If a radioactive leak is discovered, a driver should call for help immediately. Anybody who has touched radioactive packages or objects near it must wash hands thoroughly and go to a control point to be checked by a radioactive specialist. Question 14. What fluids should a driver check during an engine compartment pre-trip? A. Engine oil. B. Windshield washer fluid. C. Coolant. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. A driver should conduct a daily inspection of the engine compartment. When checking the fluids, a driver should make sure all fluids are filled to the proper level and not leaking. When inspecting the oil and transmission fluid, the dipstick should be removed, wiped clean, reinserted, and taken out again to check for the proper level. Question 15. Emergency response numbers must be included on all A. Shipping papers B. Side truck panels C. Packages D. Air tanks. The correct answer is A. Shipping papers. Shipping papers must be easy to find and accessible. In addition to emergency numbers, shipping papers must name the type of materials being transported. Question 16. How many airlines does a combination vehicle have? A. 2. B. 4. C. 6. D. 1. The correct answer is a. 2. Every combination vehicle has a service airline and an emergency airline. These two lines run between each vehicle. They go from tractor to trailer, trailer to dolly, dolly to second trailer, etc. Question 17. The blank gauge shows how much air pressure is being applied to the brakes. A. Application pressure gauge. B. Volt triple gauge. C. Electric triple gauge. D. Ear gauge. The correct answer is A. Application pressure gauge. The application pressure gauge shows how much air pressure is being applied to the brakes. When the application pressure shows the brakes are fading, a driver should slow down and use a lower gear. Question 18. When air pressure is low, a blank warning light will activate. A. Yellow. B. Red. 
C. White. D. Green. The correct answer is B. Red. When air brake pressure drops to approximately 60 PSI, a buzzer and red warning light will activate. When this happens, the driver should pull over to a safe area immediately. If the pressure continues to drop, the emergency brake will activate between 40 and 20 PSI. Question 19. What should be done if traffic delays result in a driver to run 10 minutes behind schedule? A. Try to catch up on time. B. Accept the delay. C. Drive 5 miles per hour over speed limit. D. Skip a scheduled stop to get back on track. The correct answer is B. Accept the delay. Even though running a route on time is important, safety is even more important. At times, there will be situations that are out of a driver's control that causes a route to be running late. Drivers need to accept the delay and continue to follow safe driving practices. Question 20. Slack adjusters should not move more than blank when the brakes are released. A. Half inch. B. One inch. C. Four and three quarter inch. D. One and a half inch. The correct answer is B. One inch. To check the slack adjuster, service brake should be in the release position before the driver applies the brake. When this process is performed, the slack adjuster should not move more than one inch. Question 21. Drivers are able to see approximately blank feet ahead with low beam lights. A. 175. B. 250. C. 50. D. 125. The correct answer is... B. 250. Low beam lights should be used when driving behind and passing other cars. When driving in foggy conditions, a driver should always use their low beams to improve visibility. Question 22. Blank may release air faster than the compressor can replace it. A. Pressing and releasing the brake pedal too often. B. Locking brakes. C. Engine braking. D. Light gentle braking. The correct answer is... A. Pressing and releasing the brake pedal too often. Drivers should avoid pressing and releasing the brake pedal too often to help the air compressor replace air as it is being released. Using proper braking techniques will help with the even exchange of releasing and replacing air. Question 23. The governor will cut out at A. 60 PSI B. 80 PSI C. 40 to 20 PSI D. 125 PSI the correct answer is D, 125 PSI. When the pressure in the air tanks reaches 125 PSI, the governor will cut out. This will stop the compressor from pumping air. The governor will cut back in around 100 PSI and allow the compressor to begin pumping air again. Question 24. Blank is required to operate combination vehicles. A, pre-trip inspection time. B. Less driving skill. C. More driving skill. D. Same skill as all CDL drivers. The correct answer is... B. More driving skill. Combination vehicles are usually longer and heavier than other CDL vehicles. Because of the vehicle's increased size and weight, a driver must have more knowledge and skill to operate them. Drivers must also learn specific safety factors that apply specifically to combination vehicles. Question 25. A 20-foot-long item that is placed on a flatbed requires A. Two tie-downs B. Four tie-downs C. One tie-down D. Eight tie-downs The correct answer is A. Two tie-downs When transporting cargo on a flatbed, one tie-down is required for each foot of length of cargo. If an item of cargo is 25 feet, it would require another tie-down to a total of three. Question 26. Dual air brake systems are mainly used in blank for safety. A. Emergency vehicles. B. Lighter duty vehicles. C. Heavy duty vehicles. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... C. Heavy duty vehicles. The purpose of a dual air brake system is for safety purposes. The concept of the dual brake system is to avoid total brake failure if there are any insufficiencies in any of the brake components. Question 27. When a school bus drop-off is completed, the driver should 
A. Check to make sure students are not running back to the bus. B. Turn on hazard warning lights. C. Activate amber warning lights. D. Use a horn to warn other drivers. The correct answer is... A. Check to make sure students are not running back to the bus. It is important for drivers to keep track of students and make sure everyone is accounted for. When a school bus stop is completed, drivers need to check mirrors to make sure there are not any students running back to the bus. When it is safe and students are at a safe location, the driver closes the doors, puts the bus in gear, checks the mirrors again before proceeding. Question 28. What type of vehicle is required to have an emergency brake? A. Only vehicles with air brakes. B. All vehicles. C. Only vehicles with hydraulic brakes. D. Heavy-duty vehicles. The correct answer is B. All vehicles. Since January 1, 1976, every vehicle is required to have an emergency brake. Some emergency brakes are placed on the floor and some are located near the gear selector. Question 29. The engine should be turned blank when checking lights before driving. A. On or off. B. On. C. Off. D. In second gear. The correct answer is B. On. Checking all lights on a vehicle is an important part of a pre-trip inspection. In addition to headlights, a driver should check directions, signals, amber lights, stop lights, and backup lights. Question 30. A driver should slow down and be aware of uneven road surfaces when A. There is heavy trucking traffic. B. Entering a way station. C. Driving through a construction zone. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. Driving through a construction zone. Construction zones are marked by orange signs and posted reduced speed limits. Drivers must always practice extra caution for the safety of other drivers and construction workers. Road work can result in uneven pavement, and drivers must be away from changes and reduce speed. Question 31. Drivers should blank if they are unsure if their vehicle will clear an underpass. A. Turn on high beams. B. Tap brakes. C. Go through quickly. D. Drive slow. The correct answer is D. Drive slow. Drivers should know the height of their vehicles and be aware of clearance signs to know if they will clear an underpass. If a driver is unsure and the underpass is not marked, a driver should proceed with caution and drive slow. Question 32. What should a driver do if a tire blows out? A. Take their foot off of the brake. B. Quickly steer to the side. C. Put on hazard warning lights. D. Gently press the accelerator. The correct answer is... A. Take their foot off of the brake. When a tire blows out, it is important for the driver to get the vehicle off the road safely. First, the driver should take their foot off of the brake, turn on the right direction signal, and gently accelerate to move as far off to the right of the road as possible. Question 33. When driving into a downgrade, the first step for a driver to take is A. Put the vehicle in neutral. B. Check brakes and shift into lower gear. C. Keep in the same gear. D. Gently accelerate. The correct answer is B. Check brakes and shift into lower gear. Drivers always want to make sure their vehicle is able to safely drive through a downgrade. First, a driver should tap the brakes to make sure they are working before shifting the vehicle into a lower gear. Shifting into a lower gear decreases the use of the brakes and protects against brake failure. Question 34. Where is the safety valve located on a vehicle with air brakes? A. The first tank. B. The rear tank. C. On the governor. D. On the air compressor. The correct answer is... A. The first tank. The safety valve is usually set to open at 150 psi and used to protect the system from too much pressure. It is located in the first tank, sometimes called the supply tank. Question 35. An air brake inspection should be conducted A. Daily B. Twice daily C. Weekly D. Monthly The correct answer is A. Daily An air brake inspection should be conducted daily before the vehicle is taken out on the road. The first step in an air brake check is to place chocks behind the wheel to prevent rolling. Once the bus is secure, the driver should drain the air tanks and build air pressure back up. 
All safety features should be checked to make sure they activate properly and air pressures do not release too quickly or build up too slowly. Question 36. High beam should always be used A. Whenever a driver can while driving at night B. In rainy weather C. When driving through a construction zone D. To warn distracted drivers The correct answer is A. Whenever a driver can while driving at night Driving at night reduces the visibility a driver can see ahead. Whenever possible, a driver should use their high beams to increase the driving view. High beams should never be used 500 feet of an approaching vehicle and 200 to 300 feet while following another vehicle. Question 37. What steps should a driver take when driving in slippery conditions? A. Drive slowly. B. Increase following distance. C. Look ahead for hazards. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Extra precautions are needed when driving in slippery road conditions. Drivers should make sure their tires have proper tread to increase traction. Safety should always be a driver's first priority, and steps should be taken such as keeping greater distance between other vehicles. Question 38. Having proper tire tread will A. Prevent hydroplaning B. Give better traction in the snow C. Decrease chances of a blowout D. All of the above the correct answer is D. All of the above. Having proper tire tread is important for driver safety. During pre-trip inspection, drivers should make sure the tire tread is no less than 4 32nds inch on the front tires and no less than 2 32nds inch on the rear tires. Having the appropriate tread will help drivers have better traction when driving in slippery road conditions. Question 39. Dual tires on a placarded trailer should be checked blank in addition to the beginning of a trip. A. Every hour. B. Every morning and evening. C. Every time the vehicle is parked. D. All of the above. The correct answer is C. Every time the vehicle is parked. The dual tires on a placarded trailer should be checked every time a driver stops for a break or to refuel. The driver must use a tire pressure gauge to get an accurate air pressure reading. Question 40. Blank and bias ply tires should never be used together. A. Steer. B. Drive. C. Radial. D. Trailer. The correct answer is C. Radial. The internal structure of the radial and bias ply tires are so different that they should never be used together. Combining these two tires could negatively affect the trailer's ride and wear on the tires. Question 41. Shipping papers related to hazardous materials must be kept on the driver's seat when A. The glove box is full. B. The driver is out of the vehicle. C. The driver changes trucks. D. There is not a side pocket. The correct answer is B. The driver is out of the vehicle. Shipping papers for hazardous materials must always be easy to find and get to. When a driver is out of the vehicle, the shipping papers should be left on the driver's seat or inside the driver's side door for easy access. Question 42. Hazmat employees are required to be trained and tested every A. Four years. B. Year. C. Six months. D. Three years. The correct answer is D. Three years. Before completing training, a hazmat employee may perform job functions under the direct supervision of a qualified hazmat employee. Continual training is required at least once every three years. Question 43. What mirror should a driver use to view students directly in front of a school bus? A. Passenger mirror. B. Crossover mirrors. C. Side flat mirrors. D. Side convex mirrors. The correct answer is... B. Crossover mirrors. Crossover mirrors should be adjusted so the driver can see the entire area in front of the bus. It is important for school bus drivers to check these mirrors before completing a school bus pickup or drop-off to ensure there are not any students in front of the bus before pulling out. Question 44. A driver should use the blank mirror to make sure students are seated before moving the bus. A. Crossover. B. Flat. C. Student slash passenger. D. None of the above. The correct answer is C. Student slash passenger. Drivers must make sure students are seated when the bus is moving. 
when doing a pre-trip, the student-slash-passenger mirror should be adjusted to make sure that a driver has a clear view of all passengers to briefly monitor while driving and when performing a school bus drop-off or pickup. Question 45. The blank is responsible for labeling hazardous material. A. The shipper. B. The driver. C. The receiver. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... A. The shipper. The shipper holds the main responsibility to label hazardous materials. Even so, the driver and receiver are the next line of defense to check every load of hazardous materials to confirm it is secure, safe, and properly labeled. Question 46. Heaters are prohibited in cargo space that is carrying A. Flammable liquids B. Flammable gases C. Explosives D. All of the above the correct answer is D, all of the above. Cargo heaters should never be used when transporting Class 1, Division 2.1, or Class 3 hazardous materials. Before loading any type of explosives, the truck's engine should be turned off and the cargo heater should be disconnected. Question 47. Blank is the proper way to use a fire extinguisher. A, use an up and down motion. B, aim at the base of the fire. C. Turn on and off. D. Aim high. The correct answer is... B. Aim at the base of the fire. Drivers should make sure the fire extinguisher in their vehicle has the correct rating for the load they are carrying. It should also have an up-to-date inspection and be filled to the green. Question 48. Coolant temperature should blank when the engine is started. A. Stay the same. B. Quickly rise. C. Rise gradually. D. Decrease. The correct answer is... C. Rise gradually. The coolant should be checked when pre-tripping the engine compartment to make sure it is the proper level and not leaking. On the dashboard, the temperature gauge will show if the coolant is within normal range or overheating. Question 49. Mirror check should be conducted blank when driving. A. Regularly. B. 5 to 7 seconds. C. At the beginning, middle, and end of route. D. At all scheduled stops. The correct answer is... A. Regularly. During a pre-trip, drivers should make sure that all mirrors are adjusted to them and are clean without damage. Mirrors should be checked regularly when driving to give a driver a clear view of the sides and rear of their vehicle. Checking mirrors also helps a driver have enough time to detect and respond to hazards. Question 50. A school bus must always stop at a drawbridge when A. There is a blinking yellow light B. Where there are not any vehicles on the drawbridge C. There is no signal light or traffic control attendant D. When a traffic control attendant is present The correct answer is C. There is no signal light or traffic control attendant when approaching a drawbridge, a driver should follow the signals of the bridge's signal light or the control attendant. In the event that there is not an attendant or light available, the driver is required to stop and look to make sure the bridge is clear before crossing. Question 51. Drivers should always use low beams when A. Driving in fog B. During night driving C. In early morning hours D. All of the above The correct answer is A. Driving in fog when driving in the fog, drivers should reduce their speed and use their low-beam lights. Using roadside reflectors may help a driver stay safely positioned in their lane. Drivers should also use their four-way direction signals to help them become more visible to other drivers. A driver should only drive as fast as their vision and reaction time will allow. Question 52. The distance a vehicle travels from the time a driver sees a hazard until their brain recognizes it is called A. Perception distance B. Stopping distance. C. Breaking distance. D. Reaction distance. The correct answer is... A. Perception distance. The average perception distance for a healthy, alert driver is 1 and 3 four seconds. Certain mental and physical conditions may increase this time, and drivers should always arrive to work healthy and well-rested. In addition to seeing hazards ahead, having good perception distance helps drivers when backing up and avoiding hitting other vehicles or objects. Question 53. When should mirrors be adjusted? A. Weekly. B. Before the bus is taken out. C. If a problem is discovered while driving. D. During the post-trip. 
The correct answer is B, before the bus is taken out. Mirrors need to be adjusted to fit each individual driver. Sometimes multiple drivers use the same bus, and the mirrors should be checked before starting a trip. Question 54. Never blank with an aggressive driver. A. Increase traveling distance. B. Ignore verbal assaults. C. Ignore offensive hand gestures. D. Make eye contact. The correct answer is... D. Make eye contact. Any behavior that causes tension or provokes other drivers can be considered aggressive driving. Always try to increase the distance with an aggressive driver and never make eye contact or participate in other behaviors that might exacerbate aggression. Question 55. When should bus drivers inform passengers that they are arriving at the designated stop? A. After the bus comes to a complete stop. B. Before coming to a complete stop. C. In the middle of the run. D. Only when a passenger asks. The correct answer is... B. Before coming to a complete stop. Drivers should make any important announcements regarding a designated stop before the bus stops moving. This is also a good time to remind passengers when the bus will be leaving again if there is a layover and to remind them to take carry-ons with them. Question 56. Flashing brake lights are a good way to... A. Warn other drivers they are driving too close. B. When preparing for a lane change. C. Warn other drivers when you need to stop. D. Before entering traffic. The correct answer is... C. Warn other drivers when you need to stop. Sometimes drivers need to stop when others are not expecting it. Times when a driver might need to stop and warn drivers behind them would be at a railroad crossing. Also, if a driver sees a hazard ahead that drivers behind them do not see, it would be a good time to tap brakes to warn others that you are about to stop. Question 57. If a bus is driving too fast into a banked curve, it will A. Lean toward the inside B. Lean toward the outside, increasing the chances of tipping over C. Skid on the inside D. Swing to the left The correct answer is B. Lean toward the outside, increasing the chances of tipping over. Bus drivers should always slow down before entering a banked curve. The posted speed limit sign is usually too fast for trucks and buses. The curve should be entered slowly and then gently accelerate as a driver is going through the curve. Question 58. Some signs of an impaired driver are A. Drifting into another lane B. Driving slower than posted speed limit C. Weaving in and out of lanes. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. Drivers should always be aware of unsafe driving behaviors. Weaving in and out of lanes or drifting between lanes are signs a driver may be fatigued or under the influence. Drivers should be aware, keep their distance, and use caution when other drivers are displaying signs of impaired driving. Question 59. The requirement for converter dolls to be manufactured with ABS was in the year A. 1966 B. 2004 C. 1998 D. 1970 The correct answer is C. 1998 Converter dollies manufactured on March 1, 1998 and after are required to have anti-lock brake systems. A yellow lamp will be on the left side of all dolls manufactured with ABS. Question 60. Drivers should always make sure emergency exit signs are A. Have green dot tape B. Properly labeled and visible C. A good area to store extra luggage D. Checked weekly The correct answer is B. Properly labeled and visible Emergency exit signs should always be properly labeled so they can be easily identified. Passengers should be made aware of the locations of all emergency exits. In addition to being properly labeled, drivers should check exits to make sure the alarms are working properly and they are easily accessible. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.